quite often, instead of just keeping a single value of a particular type, you want to keep several values. And there are plenty of different data structures for doing exactly that. The most simple data structure for keeping several values of the same type is an array. So let's take a look at how to make one. So I'm going to make a mutable array called A, and the type of the array is going to be slightly different. Now remember when we had a single variable you would just say i32. That would make you a single 32-bit signed integer. Now in this case let's say I want five of them. So to define this type I would do it like this. I will put square brackets around it. I will put a semicolon here and put a five. So now what I'm doing is I'm making a mutable variable called a which has five 32-bit integers as opposed to just a single integer. And then I can perform the initialization. So I can give it the values of 1, 2, 3, and 5, 4 and 5, for example. So I'm putting five values inside this data structure called an array. Now this type decoration here, it's a bit redundant given that we know what the type is here on the right. So effectively I can just you know, get rid of this or comment it out if I want to. And it's still going to be uh, the same data structure, but I'll leave this here as a reminder. So an array is a data structure where you know the size, you know how many elements you want in advance. So you have to know the fact that you need exactly five elements. And if you know exactly, then you can perform the initialization and have those five elements in here. Now, what we can do is we can get some information about the array. Like, for example, I can print line the number of elements. So I can say A has this many elements and the first element is so and so. So uh, to get the number of elements, we use a function. So A has a function called lang, which is short for length. So we can say a dot lang, call this function, and this gives us the length of the array. In this case, it's going to give us the value of five because the array happens to have five elements. And next up, if we want to take the first element, we put a, and then we use the square brackets for indexing into the array, and we want the element at position zero. So the indices start at zero. The first element in the array, the one here, has index zero. This has index two, or index one rather. This has index two, index three, and index four. So I'm printing the first element which has index zero, which is why I'm having the uh, square brackets here and a zero. So let's just run this and see what we get. Okay, so that should be arrays for my function. Let's run this. Okay, so A has five elements, and the first element is one. Um, that's correct. That feels right. Now, because I made the array mutable, and you'll notice that Rust is complaining here, saying the variable doesn't need to be mutable, but let's actually use it for something. So what I can do is I can change the any element of the array by once again using this notation. So I can say uh, that the array A at position zero the element at position zero is going to have the value 321. And then what I can do is I can once again print out the first value. So I can say that a at zero is equal to uh, a at zero. All right, so let's see what we get as the end result. So a has five elements. The first element is one, a at zero is equal to 321. Now, one very useful thing that you might want to uh, use in your uh, kind of uh, development efforts is printing out the entire array. And we can certainly write a for loop or indeed a while loop to print out the array. But there is a simpler way uh, by using the debug output. So let me show you how that works. So we print line, but here uh, inside the curly braces, we specify that we want to output uh, a debug uh, kind of output for the array. So that would be a colon followed by a question mark. So here I can feed the entire array A, and as I run this, you'll notice that I get uh, square brackets and then the contents of the entire array. So you see we had one, two, three, four, five, but then we changed the first element to 321, and that's the array that we get. So uh, fairly straightforward. Now you can also do things like, for example, check whether the uh, array has a particular value. So uh, you can, for example, say that if the array A is not equal to the array containing the values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then uh, we can print line something. Print line uh, does not uh, match, 
for example. So in this case, because I changed the first value of the array, we're, not, we're going to get this value. We're going to get the printout of does not match because the arrays are not equal. So this is how the not equals works, or you can do if uh, double equals and then put a uh, three to one here, uh, then uh, we can say uh, we have a match. So if A contains exactly the elements 3 to 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, then uh, we can do a match and I can run this and obviously I'm getting my match here. Now you cannot compare the arrays with different length. So if I put a 7 in here, I'm not going to be able to even compile this because the Rust compiler knows the, the thing on the left hand side has five elements and I'm comparing it to something which has six elements which doesn't make any sense. There is no way that these things can actually be equal. Okay, so uh, in addition to filling in an array by uh, specifying an initializer or alternatively by assigning each of the values individually, there is another way of filling in all the values and this uh, lets you kind of uh, bulk fill the array with the same value. So for example, let's say that I want an array B and I want to fill it with uh, 10 ones. What I can do is I can say one semicolon 10. So this kind of notation says that I want to have 10 elements and they're all going to be equal to one. So what I can do now is I can print all of them. Uh, let's print all of them using a for loop and this is where you kind of find out why the uh, terminal range of the for loop is the element that doesn't get included. So if I want to have an index i going from 0 to the last position of uh, the array, the last position is actually 9, it's not 10, but the length will give us a 10. So if I get b length I would actually have the value of 10. So I can put that in here, b.lang, and I will have a range going from 0 to 9, which is exactly what I want. So hopefully it makes it clear why the uh, kind of uh, exclusive upper bound on the range is useful for us. So here I'm just going to print out the actual element of the array. So this is b at index i, with i going from 0 to 9. So let's uh, let's actually run this, and you see that we get ten ones because we essentially initialized the array to just ones. Incidentally, if you want to have uh, the one uh, being a different type, shall we say, then we can control for that as well. Let me show you why. So, uh, in addition to printing out the uh, uh, the entire array, let's print out how much memory the array takes. So I'll do a print line saying b took up this many bytes and to find out the bytes we'll use uh, the mem size of val as before so up at the top of the file I'm going to use the std mem namespace and here I'm going to say uh, mem size of val and provide it a reference to b so uh, let's let's actually run this and see what we get and you'll see that at the moment the array B took up 40 bytes. So each of these effectively uh, took up four bytes. So it's a four byte or 32 bit value. Now what I can do is I can control the type of the value, not just with the type decoration. Obviously I can uh, go here and say U8 10, for example, uh, like so. But in addition to that, what I can do is I can specify the initializer here and I can give it a different value like I can say u16 for example and now if I run this you'll see it only takes up 20 bytes because instead of using 32-bit variables I used 16-bit variables. So this is how you can control what initial value you put into your array. Okay, so next up we're going to obviously talk about multi-dimensional arrays because here we have arrays which is just a single dimension of numbers. What about like representing a matrix, for example? Now this is also possible and it's done by having arrays of arrays. So let's define a matrix, let's say a two by three matrix. So I'm going to have MTX and let's look at the type definition. So here I'm going to have the type and let's suppose I want two rows inside my matrix. So the second value is going to be two, but what about the first value? Now each of the rows is itself a uh, an array. So each of uh, these values is going to be, let's say, an F32 array, and it's going to have three values in it. So what I've done here is I've defined 
MTX to be a two-dimensional array where uh, we have uh, two rows and three columns each. That's how you define it. And then I can give it the initial values. So this is actually uh, quite neat. Let's take a look at how this works. So here are the uh, rows. And the first row is going to contain 1.0, uh, not point not, and not point not again. And then the second row is going to contain, let's say, 0, 2, and 0 again. So this is how you can define a matrix, a two-dimensional array basically, and in a similar fashion you can define three and four dimensional arrays and so on, just by defining the uh, type of the array as another array. So essentially it's an array of arrays, that's how you uh, control this whole thing. Let's actually print it out using the debug output. So I'm going to use this uh, colon question mark uh, debug output for MTX and let's take a look at how uh, Rust is capable of printing it out. Obviously we uh, made a mistake here somewhere. Yes, this should be a semicolon rather than a comma. Uh, let's run this. And here is the output as Rust prints it. So the first row has 100 and the second row has 020. Okay, so let's suppose that we want to print all the diagonal values. So this value and this value. How would you do it? Well, uh, if you want to use iterators using the for loop like we did up above, then it's going to be a bit more complicated because when you're iterating the rows, everything is easy. You just take the length of the entire array. So we can say 4i in 0 to uh, matrix length. So this would be the row position. But the column position is a bit trickier because for the column position, you have to say 4j in uh, 0 Two, and this is where it becomes tricky. So you take the row at i, and you get the length of that row, length, like so. And then, of course, what you can do, for example, is you can say if i is equal to j, then it's the diagonal. So if i is equal to j, then you're on the diagonal, and you can actually print the value. So you can say, for example, let's do a print line. You can say that the matrix at uh, i, j, is equal to this value and we just feed in the i, the j and the mtx at i, j. Notice the notation here. So we get mtx at i, this gets us the row and then at j gets us the actual element. So let's uh, close this and run it. And predictably enough we get the values of 1 and 2 on the diagonal which are this value and this value. So this is how you work with arrays. However, one thing to note is that you cannot resize an array. You cannot make it smaller or larger. You always have a fixed size. If you want something to have a variable size, then you need to use a different data structure.